Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing the Cassidy game table from Game Theory Tables. And you may or may not have seen me already putting this table together in a different video on this channel. You can check that out. I'll throw a link down below. And before we get further into this video, understand that currently there's an $825 discount on getting the table and topper combination. I'll have a link in the description down below. But before you click on that link, understand that I do get a commission for anyone who buys the table from that link. So factor that in, factor that in across this whole video, including and especially doing the section where I'll tell you all the things I don't like about this table as well. But before we get into that, let's give a bit of a background here to tables, board game tables, this table specifically, all of that. And it's going to start, well, a while ago when I got my own game table for the first time, and across multiple videos and times in this channel I've talked about the value of a game table. I'm a big proponent of getting game tables, I've been pretty clear about that for a while now, and it's because I believe we spend a lot of money on this hobby and accessibility, being able to play those games more frequently, more often, with whatever circumstances, being able to cover them up and come back to them, return to them at a later point, all those are things that I think are generally worth the investment, although the investment is both in getting a game table and also getting a game table that's right for you and to that end I'll be talking about the the pros the cons of the Cassidy game table and whether it is or is not a table that's right for you at least based on my experience with it and by showing you as many different possible aspects to it. Now this is a game table that I, I game theory tables reached out to me offered to have me cover it and I said that I'd love to because well, I like game tables to begin with and this is one that I've been playing with and using now for roughly a month. I have eaten on the table, although minimally so because it's in my basement, I just want to get the full experience of trying it because this game does, this table does double as a dining room table for those who want to use it as such, and so doing my due diligence I made sure to have a meal or two on it. But mostly I've been using it for playing games. I've played games solo quite extensively, I have Assassin's Creed set up underneath here, we'll show it to you soon enough during this video. I'll try to throw some b-roll into this video as well. Don't judge me too harshly, I don't really do b-roll on this channel, but I figured it's better than me just standing here for the next 15 minutes. But overall, the Cassidy game table is going to be a game table, obviously. That means it's going to come to you with a bunch of aspects to the table that make it something worth checking out, but it's also going to have specific aspects of it that make it a better table in its own right, as well as a worse table in its own right. To begin with, the, the visual appeal, the look of the game table, I mean, you can judge that for yourself, but the quality seems to be up there. I'm not an expert on the various craftsmanship of this or that, but it certainly feels very far removed from anything resembling a cheap table. The quality seems up there, the wood materials, again, my cluelessness about the quality and how good a table might be should be evident, but it seems, it seems pretty nice, I'll say that much. It looks gorgeous, although I will note that the tabletop does scuff a little easily. You can definitely wipe it down pretty quickly, but if you're looking at it, if you're glancing at any given point, especially, or not especially, in this color specifically, in this black color, which is the one I have, you can see scuff marks across the table, but past that one disclaimer, it does seem to hold up pretty well, and it looks beautiful, in, granted in my basement, but it looks beautiful overall. It's easy to assemble. This should be evident from the video where I, for the first time jumping into it, it took me half an hour to put this thing together and it assembles and disassembles pretty easily on its own. Now there's a few different aspects of this table. Some of them are gonna be the part where maybe we'll, you know, let's go ahead and take the top off the table to show you different parts of it. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this over here and put this off to the side for a second. So if you give me a second there, we're going to put that down. Now this is Assassin's Creed set up on the table. You can see there's a lot of stuff going on, and the space is not well suited for Assassin's Creed, although it does function pretty decently. Assassin's Creed is a large game, and I've been playing this game solo by basically having a few boards. I did get a three-player game of it in as well, but there's a ton of different content and stuff going on on this table. The table has cup holders for those who want it in terms of being able to, well, have your drink, your beer, your whatever. It also has compartments over here for each section. So each section, this table sits up to eight players, and each section has both a compartment and a cup holder in it for you to utilize as you want. Now one of the things I do like, in addition to the general playing surface of the table, is I like how, and I'm pretty sure this is unintentional by the way, but I've been using it extensively as I play, you can kind of just slot cards in pretty decently between the table itself and the felt pad aspect of it. I don't think that's intentional, and no one told me about that, it just works perfectly as a bit of a card holder. Now, one thing I will encourage you to, to look into is that these cup holders over here, 
They pop up pretty nicely, which is great. They can be used for component holders if you'd like, because unless you're playing an eight player game, then you have eight cup holders around the table. Personally, I want to look into little compartments that go into here, sort of compartments that can slot in here, replacing these cup holders, giving you more component holder options, because at least speaking for myself and my plays with Assassin's Creed, I have actually been utilizing many of these cup holders. So I'm kind of, I'm sitting over here like this. I got my Assassin's Creed set up over here. And then I'm using the various compartments to hold different things as I play through the, as I play through the game, utilize all of that. It's a game that I have found works very well, both one, two, and all the way up to eight. To be very specific, I have not played any eight player games on this table, but I have had three people sitting one, two, three adjacent to each other at this table to test that aspect out, playing a game together. You can't see it well from this angle. I'll make sure the B-roll has something at some point, but this table does have a singular pedestal base so that you can effectively have eight people around the table fairly comfortably, just kind of knocking elbows just a tad. That's the full eight player count, but it works fairly well at those player counts. It's very much a jack of all trades table. It's a table that accommodates a variety of player counts pretty decently while not being perfectly suited for any one player count, which brings us to a few things that it's worth being mindful of before you, well, spend a decent amount of money on this game table. It has been doing a solid job accommodating my needs. It's been a solid job in terms of me being able to jump in, play a game, and have this, have Assassin's Creed set up and dump, jumping back and forth between whatever else I'm doing, covering up the table, coming back to it, and all of that. But there's a few things to be mindful of in terms of whether this table is right for you. And primarily, the first thing is going to come down to the, the type of space it's trying to accommodate. You see, like I said already, it does a great job being a solo game setup that I can play with. I've played two players here, I've played three players. I've capped out a three, although you can go higher yourself but it's also going to be a slightly smaller space. This is something where, this is a table you're going to be want to be mindful of, the actual dimensions and what games you can fit at this table because Assassin's Creed is basically pushing the envelope of how far I can actually get in terms of this space. This is not something you're gonna to wanna to be playing, let's say Chronicles of Drenagar, which is a bit of a table hog. Chronicles of Drenagar will not work well on this table, nor will any particularly large table hog of a game. This is gonna be a game well suited for smaller games, for Euro games, for a decent amount of space. Once you factor in the board going over here and the fact that you can have a lot of components in the cup holders, you can get a decent amount on here, but if you're looking for those ridiculously over the top table hog games, this is not going to be a table that's right for you. Additionally, as far as solo play, two player, etc., like I said already, this table is a bit of a jack of all trades situation. It is very good at accommodating a lot of different situations, and it's very good at doing that while being in a small space. Those of you who are low on space, who don't have a dedicated dining room table or anything like that, this table will be a great fit for. But as far as solo play, solo play you have a lot of extra space devoted to cup holders and compartments, so it may not be the best table for solo play. It may not be the best table for two players for the same reason. And it may not be the best play table for an eight player setup for that exact reason as well, but for a different reason. It may not be the best table for an eight player setup because effectively you're going to have a smaller amount of central space going on in the table. But if you want a table that accommodates one to, one to eight players pretty decently while being able to do a decent job at each count, the Cassidy game table is doing a solid job in that sense. Like I said already, the, the various cup holders, components, the card, the unofficial card trays that you have over there, those are all going to be nice things that complement and enable to be a pretty good table on all those counts. The other thing that's worth being mindful of, again, because I talked about already, but I do get a commission when you, well, purchase this table. And so I want to be very transparent about all the negatives, the cons, all those aspects as well, so that you're walking in well informed. The other aspects that are cons are going to come down to the top and the way that's handled, because there's a few things to be mindful of. To begin with, you already saw me take this off. It comes off pretty easily as a single person. For myself, taking it off, I can go ahead and pull it off pretty easily. Putting it back on is a bit of something else you want to be mindful of. You see, when you're putting this back on as a single person, if you're doing it with two people, it's pretty easy. But if you're doing this by yourself, you're kind of picking it up and then trying to ensure that you get it back on perfectly without potentially crushing any miniatures you have underneath. It's something that I've gotten very good at it while using this table for the past four weeks, but I was certainly nervous the first few times I did it, and it's something to be mindful of. This is a big piece of wood. It's a big piece of wood that you're going to want to be mindful of the size and picking it up and all that, as well as well where you're storing it. This is granted only relevant if you're interested in the Cassidy game table as a game table and a dining room setup at the same time, but it's going to be something that is a big piece in terms of storage and putting it on and off the table. Well, 
offs pretty easy. And then lastly, I will note is that this gap over here, you can't necessarily see it from here, but the gap you have on this table, as far as let's say having a miniature game set up, is not high. In fact, I found that this Assassin's Creed cart is exactly the right height. It's exactly how much give I have on this table if I don't want to crush any miniatures. This is not a game table with a three inch vault or two inch vault. It's one and a half inches, I don't know the exact measurements. So it's going to be something that if you're playing miniature heavy games, you're going to have to do what you can see I've done here, which is lay down the miniatures on their side before actually putting that cover on. Not necessarily a problem in and of itself. Like I said already, I've been playing a miniatures game throughout the past three, four weeks on this table without it being an issue. But it certainly is something to be mindful of, especially if you're comparing and contrasting with other game tables. You can have basically any Euro game set up, no problem whatsoever, but be mindful of that gap if you are deciding if this is a table that's right for you or not. Overall, the Cassidy game table is an excellent choice if you need a table with solid variability. It's small enough to fit in a small confined space or reasonably sized space. It accommodates one to eight players very well. It's designed comfortably handle up to eight. Small in size and easy to assemble, doubling as a dining room table. The Cassidy is going to be a great pick for many gamers, but the flip side is you also want to be mindful of what your overall needs are. Like I said already, it's a bit of a jack of all trades, accommodating a lot of different things well while not necessarily being the perfect table depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for something that's going to be solo primarily, well, to be honest, I don't actually know which tables would be a good alternative for a small solo table. Whereas if you're looking for something that's a little bigger in Gravitas, a little bigger in the space it takes up, being able to have a larger vault and accommodate a larger space in your area, well, Game Theory tables themselves, they also have the Origins game table which you can buy as well. I don't believe there's a current discount on that, but you can check that out. It will be in the link down below. Or alternatively, if you have a bit of a higher budget and are looking for something a bit more custom, personally for myself, I still enjoy my uniquely geek, uh, my uniquely, uniquely geek dining room table that I have upstairs. I'll throw a link to that but down below in the description as well. Overall, the Cassidy game table has been a solid addition to my gaming space area. Like I said already, I've been using it for the past four weeks and I'm continuing to use it so far. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Please don't hesitate to ask any questions down below or anything. I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, have a good one.